कोणता मॅक मेलन कोक रिटेल का सर मैक मैम एबीएम रिटेल का सर एबीएम एबीएम मैम एबीएम ओके सर सर मैक मिनल बुक तो नहीं है सर नहीं है हमारे पास मैक मिलन बुक सर नहीं है हमारे पास मैक मिलन बुक From this, you know, they are directly picking up the questions from your Mac Mellon. From this, book. you know, they are directly picking up the questions from your Mac Mellon. There is some problem. Somebody just see what's the problem. There is some problem. Somebody just see what's the problem. आपकी sound double आ रही है sir. ये कुछ किसी का system में खराब है कोई. Yes, I'm unmuting. Uh, Rahul, unmute yourself. Rahul, unmute. Rahul, unmute. Yes, sir. सर बुक नहीं है एबीएम की तो बेटे बुक नहीं है तो फिर कैसे करोगे एक्चुअली सर वो रिटेल का बुक के लिए बोला था तो मैंने वो ले लिया था नहीं नहीं रिटेल का तो है मैकमेलन का ये जो क्रेडिट में से चार पांच क्वेश्चन आपके डायरेक्टली बुक में से आएंगे ठीक है सर तो लेना पड़ेगा ये अभी तो है नहीं फिलहाल इसका फिर ऐसे करते हैं इसके यहां से जो हमने ना इसके क्वेश्चन ऑब्जेक्टिव टाइप बनाए हैं हेलो राहुल राहुल ये कहां चला गया ये ये प्रॉब्लम पता है ये चुप म्यूट नहीं हो रहा हाँ सर अनम्यूट नहीं हो रहा था सर हाँ तो ये सबको मैंने अनम्यूट कर दिया है या आई अनम्यूटेड एवरीबडी सो वी हैव मेड अराउंड आई थिंक सम फिफ्टी ऑड क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द एरिया वे यू गेट द क्वेश्चन तो आई थिंक आई विल पोस्ट दोज क्वेश्चन टू यू टूडे सो आई थिंक दैट इज अकॉर्डिंग ऑप्शन रिकॉर्डिंग सर ओके सर हाँ हाँ Recording in progress. So, from Macmillan, we have made around forty, fifty questions from areas where we, are, uh, which I wanted to discuss. So, I'll put those question. It is MCQ. So, if you do do those MCQ, your area will be covered. Okay. Sir, in so, area, what is the page number? The participant they don't have the book. Open the study kit. Sir, in ABM, what is the page okay. number, sir? Open the study kit. Sir, in ABM, what is the page number, sir? I'm telling you, just hold on. Kit. How many times you're going to ask me? I'm telling you, just hold on. How many times you're going to? Ask? Sir, again, double sound is coming. Yeah. Yes, Rahul, unmute yourself. Rahul, unmute. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, अपना unmute रखना है आपने. 
जी सर चलिए जी सर तो स्टडी किट खोलिए जी सर पेज नंबर वन जीरो वन पेज नंबर वन जीरो वन कैश बजट ये जो ये तो आपको सब कर दिया है नाइक कमेटी जी सर, जी सर। ये सब हो गया ना जी सर। अब आइए आपको एक क्वेश्चन आ सकता है वॉट इज दिस पेज नंबर वन जीरो टू ट्रेड्स पेज नंबर वन जीरो टू ट्रेड्स हाँ जी राहुल पढ़िए इसको ट्रेड्स सर ट्रेड रिसिवेबल डिस्काउंटिंग सिस्टम आई विल गिव यू द बैकग्राउंड earlier banks were doing bill finance bill finance bill finance mein kya hota hai you have the seller you have the buyer you have the seller's bank and you have the buyers bank now in the bill finance the seller will sell the goods to the buyer okay and the buyer will accept the bills buyer will accept the bills of exchange okay now two types are there one is where the buyer accepts the bill of exchange second is how this functions in the bill finance the seller will sell the goods through the transport company through the transport company the goods will be dispatched to the buyer the seller will send the documents to the his own bank will send the documents to his bank with the instruction to uh, get the bill presented and thereafter take the payment okay the seller bank on the due date will send the documents to the buyer bank now if the buyer is having any arrangement if the seller is having arrangement with the seller bank the seller bank will discount the bills and give credit to the seller and on due date the seller bank will send the documents to the buyer the buyer bank will get the bills accepted by the buyer will get the bills accepted and once the buyer makes the payment once the buyer makes the payment hand over the documents to the buyer and the buyer will go to the transport company and get the goods released so this was a normal bill finance now what happened if the buyer refuses to accept the documents or make the payment or if there is no money in the buyer's uh, bank account then the bill will be dishonored and the buyer bank will send the documents to the seller bank bills returned unpaid and the seller bank will again debit the account of the seller and recover the interest and other charges are we together mr rahul kya yaar राहुल फिर आप म्यूट कर म्यूट कर दिया आपने आर बी टूगेदर राहुल जी तो चले गए सर राहुल जी चले गए मैम इन द नॉर्मल बिल फाइनेंस नॉर्मल बिल फाइनेंस व्हाट इज द स्टेप द सेलर विल सेंड द स्टेप द सेलर विल send the goods to the buyer 
through the transport company. Okay. Now it depends whether it is site bill or it is a usance bill. Generally, it is a usance bill. Usance bill means that the buyer will make the payment after 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Usance period is there. The seller, suppose it is a usance bill. The seller will send the goods to the transport company and send the documents containing bill of exchange, insurance copy, the GR copy, goods receipt copy, along with the documents to his bank. The seller bank will discount the documents and give the credit to the seller. Give the credit to the seller. The seller bank will send the credit to the seller. Who is recording? Somebody is recording. Please switch off the recording. Otherwise, the class can't continue. The seller bank will send the documents to the buyer bank. Okay. And the buyer bank, what will do the, the buyer bank will do the if it is a UNAS bill, the buyer bank will present the document, the buyer to the buyer. The buyer will accept. <laughs> the documents the buyer bank will accept the the buyer will accept the documents the buyer bank will deliver the documents the buyer will go and get the goods released okay and on the due date the buyer bank will debit the account of the buyer buyer bank will debit the account of the buyer okay and remit the payment to the seller bank remit the payment to the seller bank and the seller bank will adjust the amount which has been advanced given to the seller on account of discounting charges. But if the buyer refuses to accept the documents or dishonors the document, the buyer bank will return the documents to the seller bank. The seller bank will then what will do? Debit the account of the seller. Whatever money they have given by way of discounting, will be recovered along with the interest. So this was the bill finance. In the bill finance, the basic problem was that the seller was not certain that the payment will get, he'll get the payment from the buyer. So as an alternative, a concept came, which was called factoring. Which was called factoring. Under the printing, what happened? Sir, you see, it's a visit called factoring. Wo bata rahe, bitte. Factoring to samaj lo pehle. Seller, then you have the buyer. Then let's say SBI becomes a factor. SBI becomes a factor. Okay. Now, under factoring, what will happen? The buyer and the factor will enter into agreement, and the the factor will be will will do the assessment of the buyer, do the credit rating of the buyer, and fix the limit of the buyer that for so much amount I am going to do your factory. Once this is done, the seller will send the goods to the buyer along with the documents. Okay, once the buyer accepts, the seller will get these documents given give to the factor. The factor will purchase the transaction. After the transaction is purchased, and the factor will make the payment to the seller. Now, the factor has to do the recovery from the buyer. If the buyer defaults, the factor will have to bear the risk of default. The factor will have to bear the risk of default. Okay. Now, with recourse means, with recourse means, 
SBI can again debit the account of the of the seller without recourse means it is the bad it will be the bad debt of the SBI factor. So RBI said if you are doing with recourse with recourse means SBI factor can again debit the account of the seller. Am I clear? So RBI says if you have to do uh, with the reports, then there is no difference between bill finance and factory. So as per RBI guidelines, the banks which are doing, fact, it can be banks, it can be other uh, financial institutions, factoring institutions, all those who are doing this, it has to be without reports. It has to be without reports. Am I clear now? Sir, site bill. Site bill means which has to be paid. The last one is what is the other one? Site bill means which has to be paid. Am I clear? Sir, site bill. Which has to be paid. Site bill or demand bill. Which has to be paid immediately. Means there is no use of period. There is no provision for any credit. Okay. okay, use ask bill means where you have the period that the payment will be made after so many days. Payment will be made after so many days. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Sir, sir please repeat with recourse and without recourse. Ma'am, with recourse means if the buyer defaults. If the buyer defaults, yes. the factor has the right to debit the account of the seller. Means okay. the factor has the recourse against the seller. Am I clear? Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. So if the factor has the right to recover from the seller, then there is no difference between bill finance. And factory. And factory. Okay. Yes. So, what are the RBI guidelines? Yes. That the fact that this factor institution, factoring institution, has to do it without reports. Has to do it without recourse. Now it is clear. Are we together? Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. A trades is a improvement over factoring. So, trades is improvement over factoring. So, what is trade? Yes, somebody read out. Who will read out? Sir. Yes. Factoring me bank or kya fayda hota hai, sir? Ma'am, is my bank nahi hai. Bank factoring bhi kar sakta hai. और कोई और फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन भी फैक्टरिंग कर सकता है ये जो ये भाई इट इज जस्ट लाइक लोन यू आर गिविंग लोन यू आर गिविंग क्रेडिट फैसिलिटी यू आर चार्जिंग इंटरेस्ट यू आर चार्जिंग ऑल योर इट इज जस्ट लाइक क्रेडिट फैसिलिटी ओके सर सी क्रेडिट फैसिलिटी ओके सर तो सर फैक्टरिंग क्या विदाउट रिकॉर्ड ही होता है हमेशा बेटे इन थ्योरी इट इज बोथ विद रिकोर्स एंड विदाउट रिकोर्स इन थ्योरी इट इज बोथ विद रिकोर्स एंड विदाउट रिकोर्स आई डोंट नो व्हाट टू डू नाउ सिने डबल लगाया सर अजीत सर ओके किसी ने मोबाइल पे भी लगाया है और कंप्यूटर पे भी लगाया है अजीत सर Now, sir, read this out. seller and buyer both should have account in uh, SBI factor, sir. Pardon? Seller and buyer both should have account in uh, factor. Uh, bank, naturally, sir. naturally. See, the buyer, the the fact, the factor will do the risk assessment of the buyer and will fix the limit and will fix the limit. Okay, and the seller, 
it is not necessary for the seller to have the count with the factor. What is and important is the buyer because factor has to bear the risk on whose account? Seller account. No. With recourse. Without recourse, man. See, a win recourse to RBI ne kaha nahi karna. Buyer account. Buyer. RBI said that if the banks are doing with recourse, then there is no difference between bill finance and factoring. So it has to be without recourse and the assessment, credit risk assessment will be done. The factor will do it of the buyer. Am I clear? Yes, yes. sir. Uh, read out trades. Yes. Who will read out? Surprising, you know, nobody is responding. Shall I? Yeah, read out, ma'am. Uh, micro, small and medium enterprises, despite the important role played by them in the economic fabric of the country, continue to face constraints in obtaining adequate finance, particularly in terms of their ability to convert their trade receivables into liquid funds. In order trade, to address, you know, what is trade receivables? Trade receivables are when the goods are sent, sent, sold on credit. Next. In order to address this pan-India issue through setting up of an institutional mechanism for financing trade receivables, the RBI had published a concept paper on micro Leave small it, leave it, leave it. It is all kachra. Next scheme. Scheme. The scheme designed by the RBI focuses on setting up and operating the institutional mechanism for facilitating the financing of trade receivables of MSMEs from corporate and other buyers, including government, government departments and PSUs through multiple financiers. Yeah. The, tra the trades will facilitate the discounting of both invoices as well as bills of exchange. So this is what you have to remember. Instead of factoring, the trades will facilitate the discounting of both invoices as well as bill of exchange. Next. Further, as the underlying entities are the same, hmm. MSMEs and corporate and other buyers, including government departments and PSUs, the trades could deal with both receivables factoring as well as reverse factoring so that higher transaction volumes come into the system and facilitate better pricing. Next. The transactions processed and the trades will be without recourse to the MSMEs. Okay. So, again, trade also have to be without recourse. Next. Uh, Definition. Factoring, factoring unit. A standard nomenclature used in the trades for an invoice or a bill on the system. Factoring units may be created either by, by the MSME seller in the case of factoring or by corporate and other buyers including government departments and PSUs as the case may be. Financier refers to a bank as well as an NBFC factor participating in the trades and who accepts the factoring unit for financing purpose. Next. Participants. MSME sellers, corporate and other buyers including the government department, PSUs and financiers, both banks and NBFC factors will be the direct participants in the trades. Next. The the trades will provide the platform to bring these participants together for facilitating uploading accepting, discounting, trading, and settlement of the invoices, bills of MSMEs. The bankers of sellers and buyers may be provided access to the system where necessary for obtaining information on the portfolio of discounted invoices, bills of respective clients. The trades may tie up with necessary technology providers, system integrators, and entities providing dematerialization services for providing its services. Next. Eligibility criteria to set up and operate the trades. Financial criteria. Since the trades will not be allowed to assume any credit risk, its minimum paid up equity capital shall be rupees 25 crore. The, for, the foreign shareholding in the trades would be as per the extent foreign investment policy. Next. En entities other than the promoters will not be permitted to have shareholding 
in excess of 10% of the equity capital of the treads. The overall financial strength of the promoter's entity seeking to set up treads would be an important criteria of assessment and selection. Leave it, leave it. Now read the, read the uh, see what type of questions you'll get is, the simplest is, what is full form of treads? So this is one question which comes. Okay. Second is what should be the paid up capital criteria? Third can be the general question on trades. Third can be the general question on the what is advantages of trade. So once you read the process flow, then it will be clear. Yeah. Read out the process flow given right at the bottom. Process flow under trades. Corporate and other buyers, including government departments and public sector undertakings, send purchase order to MSME seller outside the purview. So you of you have the MSME, then you have the government department department PSUs. Okay, they are the buyers. So MSME is the seller and these are the buyers. Yeah, next. MSME seller delivers the goods along with an invoice. That so MSME will send the goods to the buyer along with the invoice. Next. There may or may not be an accepted bill of exchange depending on the trade practice between the buyer and the seller. Outside next. the purview of the trades. Next. Thereafter, on the basis of either an invoice or a bill of exchange, the MSME seller creates a factoring unit, which should be a standard nomenclature used in the trades for an invoice or a bill on the system on trades. Next. Subsequently, the buyer also logs on to trades and flags this factoring unit as accepted. Okay. So, once the uh, uh, this is there, the MSME will... Uh, Upload this. Will upload this invoice. Okay. And what will happen? The buyer will accept this uploaded invoice. Read the C point again. Thereafter, on the base of either an invoice or a bill of exchange, the MSME seller creates a factoring unit. Yes which would be a standard nomenclature used in the trades for an invoice or a bill on the system. On okay, trade. so this will be uploaded on the trade platform. This will be uploaded on the trades platform. Next. And once it is uploaded, what will the buyer has to do? The buyer also logs in to the trades and flag this factoring unit as Accepted means he he assumes the liability. Next, supporting documents evidencing movement of goods may also be hosted by the MSME seller on the trades in accordance with the standard list or checklist of acceptable documents indicated in the trades. Next, the trades will standardize the time window available for buyers to accept the factoring units which may vary based on the underlying document and invoice or bill of exchange. Next. The trades may have either a single or two separate modules of, for transactions with invoices and transaction with bills of exchange if so required. In Next. either case, all transactions routed through trades will in effect deal with factoring units irrespective of whether they represent an invoice or a bill of exchange. Now I'll tell you what happens. Then there are financiers sitting here. Then there are financiers. You have financiers here. So once this invoice is uploaded, once this invoice is uploaded and accepted by the buyer, the financiers will bid that they are ready to finance this transaction at this rate, at this discount rate. Okay. Now, once the financiers upload the uh, uh, bid for this transaction, 
the msme will have to accept which bid it is accepting okay once the msme accepts the bid the financer will make the payment on the trade platform and the trade will make the payment to the msme seller and now the msme seller is out of the picture on due date the government department has to make the payment to the trade platform and the trade platform will make the payment to the financer am i clear yes sir so this is an yes, improvement sir. over the this is an improvement over the factory that here you have a list of financers who are bidding for this particular transaction and once the msme accepts the bid the payment will be given to the msme and on the due date the government department will make the payment to on the trades and the financer will get back the payment along with the interest so this is what is trades am i clear yes sir so with this background you will be able to uh, answer the question whatever type of question come you will be able to answer okay now page number 104 factoring and forfeiting yeah so factoring is for domestic transaction forfeiting is for export transaction yeah read out ma'am yeah <clears throat> Factoring is a system by way of which the factors, usually banks, discount current and future trade bills, receivables, and trade debts of their clients at an agreed rate, and service charges on ongoing basis. Second paragraph, read out. Second paragraph. Forfeiting is a mechanism of financing export receivables. Export receivables are discounted, which are evidenced by bills of exchange or promissory notes. It is without recourse to the seller. the receivables carry medium to long term maturities it is on a fixed rate basis up to 100% of the contract value okay so the only difference between factoring and forfeiting is factoring is domestic and forfeiting is forfeiting is export export okay and uh, forfeiting is under lc or bank guarantee under lc or bank guarantee okay bank guarantee. so this is rest we, the concept is clear now uh, term loan there is nothing technical in this pay number 106 take out finance take out finance this question comes what is take out finance let's say that in delhi the government decides to have a metro train metro train from delhi to agra page number page number 108 a metro train or bullet train i'll say bullet will be better bullet train from delhi to agra now the cost of project is huge let's say it is 5 it is 5000 crores now no bank has the capacity to provide 5000 crores no bank or financial institution has the capacity or the capacity to bear the risk for 5000 crore because the of the amount second gestation period gestation period then the risk of overrun of overrun in time and cost cost of project okay and the very long very long <coughs> repayment schedule 
repayment schedule. So what the banks do, banks and financial institution, they make a queue. They make a queue. And what is a queue? Queue is that for first seven years, these group of banks will finance next what seven is years. Third point, sir. Third point after the station. Risk of overrun in the time and cost of project. And fourth is very long repayment schedule. Very long repayment schedule. <clears throat> okay. So the banks, they make a queue that for the first seven years, these seven or ten banks, they will take the uh, financing responsibility. Next seven years, this group of banks will take over the liability. Next seven years, this group will take over the liability. This is called takeout finance. Yeah, read out, man, takeout finance. Where it is, sir? Page number 108. 108. Take out finance. Yeah. Commercial bank funding of infrastructure projects runs the risk of asset liability mismatch as infrastructure projects are always long term propositions. So, this question basically, this question comes that what is the reason of take out finance? Because the uh, there is a risk of asset liability mismatch. You have already done in the BFM. Next. An innovative method to overcome this is the use of takeout finance. Here, a bank which is funding infrastructure projects gain, get into an arrangement with a financial institution. Hmm. Next. Parties to takeout finance. In takeout finance, there will be three parties. With the company whose project is financed, taking over institutions and the lending banks or financial institutions. Okay. So, this is the financing institution. These are the institution which will take over the liability. Next. Next. Uh, unconditional takeout finance. Yeah. The other institution commits to buying the bank's loan after a certain period. Hmm. There are no conditions attached. Next. Conditional takeout finance. Here the institution commits to taking over the finance from the lending institution only if it is satisfied with certain stipulated conditions. Next. Hence, it is only unconditional takeout financing that helps bank resolve the asset liability mismatch. Since under the conditional takeout financing model, the long-term risk still remains on the books of the banks until the takeout actually happens. Hmm. In summary, takeout financing structure is essentially a mechanism designed to enable banks to avoid asset liability maturity mismatches that may arise out of extending long tenure loans to infrastructure projects. Next. Under the arrangements, bank financing the infrastructure projects will have an arrangement with IDFC or any other financial institution for transferring to the later the outstanding in their books on a predetermined basis. Next. IDFC and SBI have devised different takeout financing structure this is the requirements of various banks addressing issues such as liquidity, asset liability mismatches, limited availability of project appraisal skills. IDFC has also developed a model agreement that can be considered for use as a document for specific projects in conjunction with other project loan documents. Next. RBI has suggested that the agreement between SBI and IDFC could provide a reference point for other banks to enter into somewhat similar arrangement with IDFC or other financial institutions. So, with this, you can you will be able to answer the question. With the example of this bullet train from Delhi to Agra and what we have read, is the concept clear now? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So the basic purpose of this is how to handle the asset liability mismatch. Okay. So this is one question you get from here. Next. Liquidity support from IDS. Oh, leave it, leave it. You not you not get anything. Pay number 1091010. It is all what you have done in the GIB. What is Perry Pasu charge? 
Perry Passu charge, yes. Entering the suits of form. No. Perry Passu charge is. Perry Passu charge. Perry Passu charge runs equally. Uh, I'll give you the, the example first. That a, a, a borrower has been financed 500 crore. And then you have bank A, B, C. A has given 200 crore and B has given 150 crore and this bank has given 150 crore. Okay. Now, when the recovery will be made, it will be shared in this ratio. Or let's say to make it simple, there are two banks or to make the example simple, let's say it is 100 crore project and this bank has given 60 and this bank has given 40 crores. The recovery will be shared in the ratio of 3 is to 2. Whatever recoveries will be done, it will be shared in the ratio of 3 is to 2. Am I clear? Yes, sir. This is simple, simplest way to understand Peri Pasu. Now read out Peri Pasu. Peri Pasu charge. Peri Pasu charge ranks equally among the creditors. Uh -huh. When a single asset is offered as security to more than one creditor, the charge over that security is called Peri Pasu charge. Hmm. Each creditor has the charge over the securities in the proportion to the low amount of loan. Am I clear? And whatever recoveries will be made, it will be shared in the same ratio. Next. Uh, Paripasu charge is created in consortium and syndicate lending. Okay. Now, now, what is the concept of consortium? Consortium. What are the latest RBI guidelines? Latest RBI guidelines is that the bank should make their own policies. Banks should make their own policies regarding consortium. There is no upper limit. But what the banks have to keep in mind is the large exposure framework. Large exposure framework guideline. Framework guideline. What is this large exposure framework guideline? It is given on your page number. It is given on your page number 121. Open 121. Page number 121. Yeah, read out. Large exposure framework. A bank's exposure sometimes results in concentration of its assets to one party or a group of connected counterparties. So the question which comes is, the large exposure framework, what it minimizes which risk? Which risk? It is credit and concentration risk. Yes. So this question comes in the promotion. Credit and concentration risk. Concentration risk is, you know, the bank taking exposure in a single counterparty. Next. Next. Yes, ma'am. Ba bank's exposure sometimes results in concentration of its assets to one party or a group of connected counterparties. This phenomenon gives rise to concentration risk for the bank. In order to mitigate concentration risk, limits on bank exposure in relation to bank's capital funds were fixed by RBI in 1989. 
Thereafter, the norms were revised several times with latest revision made in June 2019 based on Basel Committee in Banking Supervision Standards on Supervisory Framework for Measuring and Controlling the Large Exposures. Revised norms are effective from 1 to 2019. Next. Scope of... Sir, one more concentration, sir. One more concentration, sir. Hindi mein bata de. Concentration risk, yaar. Putting all your eggs in one basket. Bank lending to a borrower. To a borrower. Or a group of borrowers. Ki matar, ek bank, ek hi borrower ko, ya group of borrower ko de raha hai. To bank ko sa risk ho ga. Concentration risk. क्रेडिट रिस्क तो है इसके साथ एक रिस्क और हो गया अगर एक बैंक एक एक ग्रुप को दे जा रहा है फॉर एग्जांपल वन बैंक गिव्स क्रेडिट फैसिलिटीज टू वन ग्रुप लेट्स से एंड दिस इज व्हाट द फिच हैज सेड दैट बैंक एक्सपोजर टू अदानी ग्रुप इज टू हाई टू मच एक्सपोजर इज देर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन रिस्क ओके नेक्स्ट scope of application banks have to comply with the lef norms at two levels yeah group level consolidated group including its associates subsidiaries branches and joint ventures in india as well as abroad huh. solo level including overseas operations so it can be individual borrower or it can be group group of borrower one group let's say tata group they have let's say 10 companies and one bank is financing all this 10 companies so what are the norms rest you don't have to read you just read the bottom table how much exposure bank can take to a single counterparty the bottom table type yeah, of exposure out. Type of exposure, cap yeah. on exposure. Single counterparty, twenty percent. So of- this is important. Uh, one bank can take how much exposure in a single party? Twenty percent. Twenty percent of the eligible capital base of the eligible capital base. base of the bank and what is eligible capital base eligible capital base is your tier 1 capital it is your tier 1 capital group of connected counterparties 25% फंडिंग क्या हो गया एडिशनल फॉर एक्सेप्शनल केसेस अलोड जस्ट अ सेक आई एम आस्किंग इज दिस क्लियर यस सर व्हाट अबाउट अदर्स नोबडी अच्छा यस सर व्हाट अबाउट अदर्स नोबडी रिस्पोंडिंग यस सर यस सर यस सर यस सर नो सर नो सर क्या सर टीयर 1 कैपिटल प्लीज एक्सप्लेन मैम ये आपका रिस्क मैनेजमेंट में हमने किया नहीं बीएफएम में टेयर वन कैपिटल टेयर टू कैपिटल अरे सर तो फिर क्या करना है टेयर वन कैपिटल कितना होना चाहिए टोटल योर सी ए आर इज नाइन परसेंट देन यू हैव सी सी बी टू पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट टोटल इज इलेवन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट आउट ऑफ सी ए आर वन हाउ मच शुड बी टेयर वन Seven percent, and this is tier two. Two percent. It is seven percent, and this is two percent. How much should be common equity tier one? Five point five. Five point five. Five point five percent. This is one point five percent. So it uh, that's good. You have raised. This is common equity tier one. Eligible capital base is common equity. Tier, tier one. Am I clear? Yes. So sir. one bank can give to a single borrower how much? Twenty percent. Twenty percent. 
20% of the eligible capital base of the bank. So single borrower is 20%. Uh, group of connected counterparty. It is how much? 25%. 25%. Board of directors can give 5% over and above. Board of directors can give? 5% extra. 5% over and above. Sir, this means that the bank's capital is accordingly you can't give 20% of the single borrower. Yes, yes, sir. Common equity tier 1. Sir, it's 25% of the bank. 25% is, ma'am, you can see it in the second line. Single, single counterparty is 20%. Group of connected counterparty. Who the example I gave, Tata Group, they have 10 subsidiaries, associate firm, that total should not be more than 25% of the eligible oh, okay, capital sir. base. Am I clear? Yes, sir. But it not chahiye, iske bahar question nahi aayega aapko. Because this is sum and substance. Okay? So, for multiple consortium or syndication now RBI says it is a discretion of the bank okay but the banks have to follow the group the large exposure framework guideline they cannot they cannot violate these guidelines am I clear next question which you get is on Page number 120. Page number 20. Loan system for delivery of bank credit. Loan system for delivery of bank credit. Now, what is this loan system for delivery of bank credit? RBA observed that when the banks give term loan, the borrower repays in installments. Okay. By repaying the installment, what happens? The, the liability of the borrower keeps on reducing on reducing and when the repayment is being made liability of the borrower is reducing and also bank exposure bank exposure is also reducing is also reducing. So in term loan, the over a period of time, the exposure of the bank to this borrower is reducing. But in case of working capital, what happens? The Suppose a borrower has been given 500 crores. Now the borrower is not repaying anything. And every time uh, the RBI observed that the bank is enhancing the limit. Is enhancing the limit. So what RBI has done is that when the bank gives this working capital, they have to divide this into two parts. Working capital, demand loan and core working capital limit core working capital limit and for working capital demand loan the bank should fix the repayment the bank should fix the repayment am i clear so that the dependence on the bank keeps on reducing yes ma'am read out loan system for delivery of bank credit yeah 
banks provide working capital finance by way of cash credit or overdraft working capital demand loan purchase or discount of bills bank guarantee letter of credit factoring of which cash credit is by for the most popular mode of working capital financing hmm. while cc has its benefits it also possess several regulatory cha- challenges such as perpetual rollovers transmission of liquidity management from the borrowers to banks or rbi hampering of smooth transmission of monetary policy so what is perpetual rollover perpetual rollover means it is this 500 crore limit is being renewed <coughs> there is a renewal there is no reduction because what is the basic principle of lending the basic principle of lending is bank lends the borrower generates profit generate profits part of the profits are plowed back plowed back and dependence on bank borrowing is reduced dependence on bank borrowing is reduced so this is a principle of lending that the there should be plow back of the profit but in cc limit the limits are renewed over a period of time they are not being reduced for that they have come out with this loan system or for delivery of bank credit yeah read out the working capital limit should be considered only after the project nearing completion and after ensuring full tie up of the term loan requirements of the borrower next like, these limits would be either in the form of fixed loans or running accounts and or bill financing loan requirements of the borrower next like, these limits would a, would be either in the form of fixed loans or running accounts on the bill financing facility next like, the finance extended under this category would be for meeting the funds requirements for day to day operation of the units that is to meet recurring expenses uh, such as acquisition of raw material the various expenses connected with products conversion of raw materials into finished products marketing and administrative expenses next rbi guidelines yeah. with a view to enhance credit discipline among the larger borrowers enjoying working capital facility from the banking system rbi has advised the delivery of bank credit for such borrowers shall be as under yeah minimum level of loan component and effective date in respect of borrowers having aggregate fund based working capital limit of 50500 million and so above, this is applic and this is where the question comes this loan delivery system is applicable to which borrowers borrower which is having working capital fund based limit of rupees how much 15 million. 100 million yeah 1000 1500 million and above so this this works out to how many rupees 150 crore 150 crore 50 crore, crore. And above. ओके या आगे पढ़िए 150500 मिलियन एंड अबो फ्रॉम द बैंकिंग सिस्टम ए मिनिमम लेवल ऑफ लोन कंपोनेंट ऑफ 40% शैल बी इफेक्टिव फ्रॉम 1 अप्रैल 2019 सो आउट ऑफ दिस 40% शुड बी द वर्किंग कैपिटल डिमांड लोन कंपोनेंट एंड 60% शुड बी द कैश क्रेडिट कंपोनेंट 60% should be the cred cash credit component next this is from which date april 1st 2019 first april 2019 now read the last line last line of this paragraph 
Accordingly, for such borrowers, the outstanding loan component must be equal to at least 40% of the sanctioned fund based working capital limit, including ad hoc limits and TODs. Hence, for such. Hence Ma'am, for, last, last, last two lines of this page. The guidelines will be effective from April 1st, 2019, covering both existing as well as new relationships. The 40% loan component will be revised to 60% with effect from July 1st, 2019. So, and from 1st July 2019, this has become 60% and this has become 40%. Am I clear? Is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, so, 40, 60% working capital. Uh, 60% of working capital demand loan, which you have to do repayment schedule fix. Karna hai. Basically, sir, WCDL to fit it in term loan. What is the purpose? The purpose is that the profit 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 is so that bank exposure धीरे धीरे bank exposure धीरे धीरे क्या हो जाएगा कम हो जाएगा कम हो जाएगा so that the bank has funds to lend to other borrowers now read out that continue the paragraph from the big, from the same where you left accordingly for such borrowers the outstanding loan component working capital loan must be equal to at least 40% of the sanctioned fund based fund based working capital limit hmm. including ad hoc limits and TODs. Hence for such borrowers drawings up to 40% of the total fund based working capital limits shall be allowed from the loan component. Next. Drawings in excess of the minimum loan component threshold may be allowed in the form of cash credit facility. Next. The Perfect. The verification of the W working capital limit into loan and cash credit component shall be effected after excluding the export credit limits, pre-shipment and post-shipment, and bills limit for inland sales from the working capital limit. Next. Investment by the bank in the commercial papers issued by the borrowers shall form part of the loan component, provided the investment is sanctioned as part of the working capital limit. Next. Sharing of working capital finance. All lenders in the consortium shall be individually and jointly responsible to make sure that at the aggregate level, the loan component meets the above mentioned requirements at individual bank level. Amount and tenure of the loan. The amount and tenure of the loan component may be fixed by banks in consultation with the borrowers, subject to the tenure being not less than seven days. Next. Banks may decide to split the loan component into w, the working capital limits with different maturity periods as per the needs of the borrowers. Next. As per the needs of the borrowers. Repayment, renewal, rollover of loan component. Banks, consortia, syndicates will have the discretion to play the repayment of the working capital limit in installments or by way of bullet repayment subject to IRAC norms. Banks may consider rollover of the working capital limits at the request of the borrower subject to the compliance with the extent IRAC norms. Next. Risk weights for undrawn portion of cash credit limits. This effective, question comes in the senior scale. Yeah. Effective from April 1st, 2019, the undrawn portion of the cash credit overdraft limit sanctioned to the off, off, offshore large borrowers irrespective of whether unconditionally cancelable or not shall attract a credit conversion factor of 20%. So this you remember, that undrawn portion will have the risk weight credit conversion factor at what rate? 20%. 20%. So credit conversion factor means the uh, additional 20%? Yeah. Yeah, you have done it in the Basel norms with numerical. Uncovered portion is numerical be hai. And ye usme cover ho jata hai. Okay. Ye tha apka ek jase question aata hai. Then you get a question on page number 
127 eblr earlier you sir. had sir mclr first you had the base base rate system then you had mclr now you have eblr sir yes sir, this, sir uh, risk weight of for for undrawn portions for the, of cash credit against once again repeated sir it is 20%, 20% credit they call it credit conversion factor you sanction a limit but they don't draw it so 20% they say will because the either they hear the risk weight is always calculated on the balance outstanding in normal case risk weight kab hota hai when there is a debit balance outstanding yes sir so you apply in the credit risk aapne dekha na na ki retail mein itna outstanding hai कंज्यूमर क्रेडिट में इतना आउटस्टैंडिंग है तो आप रिस्क वेट लगाते हो ओके कमर्शियल रियल एस्टेट में कितना रिस्क वेट है 100 परसेंट कंज्यूमर फाइनेंस 125 परसेंट वेंचर कैपिटल 150 परसेंट सो दैट इज ऑन द आउटस्टैंडिंग बट हियर यू हैव सैंक्शन द लिमिट बट ही इज नॉट यूटिलाइजिंग सो ऑन द अनयूटिलाइज पोर्शन ऑल्सो दे से इट हैज टू बी 20%. 20%. Otherwise, what will happen? The banks will do that. Although this CC limit, they'll say okay for the year ending when they have to prepare the balance sheet, they'll try to do the window dressing and reduce the balance in this. Okay, iska reduce karke uska risk weight kam ho jayega. So, wo RB ne kaha ki jo apka undrawn portion hai, uske upper bhi apne kya karna hai risk weight. 20% but this is clear uh, now sir, irrespective of amount pardon is it is it, 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 it is it is on the basis of the limit sanction agar aapne 100 crore ka limit hai okay aur uska undrawn portion kitna hai 50 crore uska undrawn hai to 50 crore ke upar 20% okay okay चलिए नेक्स्ट पेज नंबर 127 एक्सटर्नल बेंचमार्क बेस्ड लेंडिंग यस एक्सटर्नल बेंचमार्क बेस्ड लेंडिंग या द रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया हैज डिसाइडेड टू लिंक ऑल न्यू फ्लोटिंग रेट पर्सनल और रिटेल लोन्स हाउसिंग ऑटो एंड फ्लोटिंग रेट लोन्स टू माइक्रो एंड स्मॉल एंटरप्राइजेस एक्सटेंडेड बाय द बैंक With effect from October first, two thousand nineteen, to external benchmarks. Okay, the so just remember, it is first October two thousand nineteen. It is micro and small. This is, and from first April two thousand twenty. they have also included medium medium sector units so now all your micro small medium enterprises are under this external benchmark based lending yeah read out the provision of this guideline shall apply to every scheduled commercial bank small finance bank and local area banks licensed to operate in india by rbi next the directions shall not be applicable to operations of foreign branches of indian banks okay now what was the objective of this eblr the objective of this eblr was rbi said that when we reduce the repo rate that we keep on reducing the repo rate but the banks banks do not pass on the benefit the benefit of reduction 
of reduction in repo rate rate to the borrowers do not reduce do not pass on the benefit of reduction in the policy rate to the borrower in contrast when repo rate is increased when repo rate is increased bank immediately raise the lending rate now repo has been increased for last uh, four times and i think all of you must be knowing that the banks have increased the lending rates yes sir okay jab to repo rbi increase karta hai to banks lending rate ko increase kar dete hain but jab banks repo rate ko reduce karta hai tab banks kya karte hain they don't pass on the benefit of the reduction in the repo rate to the borrow to the same extent to the same extent isliye rbi ne kya kaha कि ये जो ईबीएलआर है ये आपने किसके साथ लिंक करना है उन्होंने रेपो रेट के साथ लिंक कर दिया एम आई क्लियर हाँ जी पढ़िए रिवाइज गाइडलाइंस रिवाइज गाइडलाइंस ऑल न्यू फ्लोटिंग रेट पर्सनल और रिटेल लोन्स हाउसिंग ऑटो एंड फ्लोटिंग रेट लोन्स to micro and small enterprises extended by banks from october 1st 2019 shall be benchmarked and medium enterprises from 1st april 2020 yes uh october 1st 2019 shall be benchmarked to one of the following uh, reserve bank of india policy repo rate government of india three months treasury bill yield pub published by the financial benchmarks india private limited government of india six months treasury bill yield published by fbir any other benchmark benchmark market interest rate published by the fbir banks are free to offer such external benchmark linked loans to other type of borrowers as well Next. in order to ensure transparency standardization and ease of understanding of the loan products by the borrowers a bank Next. must adopt a uniform external benchmark within a loan loan category in other words the adoption of multiple benchmarks by the same bank is not allowed within a loan category next spread spread under external benchmarks the banks are free to decide the spread over the external benchmark however credit risk premium may undergo change only when borrower's credit assessment undergoes a substantial change as agreed upon in the loan contract further other components of spread including operating cost could be altered once in 3 years so what has happened so rbi says that bank charges rate of interest charges rate of interest so you have the repo rate then bank can add the risk premium on this So repo rate is a base. Then bank can add risk premium. <laughs> Then bank can add on account of the loan tenor. Loan tenor. Then bank can add the negative carry. on account of trr okay so uh, this is your repo rate then the risk premium can be loaded loan tenor can be loaded negative carry on account of trr can be loaded and the bank will work out that this is their lending rate this is their lending rate which they call it eblr with they call it eblr am i clear yes sir what is this negative carry negative carry on account of crr means that there is certain amount with the banks have to pass with rbi on account of crr for which rbi does not pay any interest 
So that is the cost which will be added. Am I clear? So this risk premium can be altered once in three years. Once in three years. And then you can also add your operational cost. So once in three years, you cannot, you can't keep on changing the risk premium uh, every time. It has to be once in three years. Next, aage padhi hai. Spread under external, uh, re reset of interest rates under yeah. external benchmark. The interest rate under external benchmark shall be reset at least once in three months. So this is all what you need to know. So, what is the concept of EBLR? EBLR, it has replaced what? MCLR. It has been introduced with effect from what date for micro and small enterprises and medium enterprises added. Then, uh, what are the that it has been linked to what? Repo. Linked to your repo rate, one, three months, 90 days treasury bill yield, then you have six months treasury bill yield. So your base rate will be linked to your repo rate, then you can add your risk premium, tenor, negative carry and operational cost. And then you calculate the EBLR, this you have to give it on your website website and you also have to show the calculation how you have calculated your eblr lending rate so that it is transparent am i clear the risk premium has to can be reset once in three years whereas uh, the resetting has to be once in three months so this is all what you need to know. Am I clear? Are we together? Yes, sir. Sir, this is same like uh, RLLR. Yeah. 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 They call it by different names, but the basic concept is the same. RLLL, ko kya kehte ho? what is the full form? Risk lending rate. Pardon? Risk based lending rate. Yeah, same. In other banks, what rate, what concept you're using? RBLR. Uh, in a -lag bank ne -lag -lag de diya. But the basic guidelines are EBLR. External. What do you mean by external? That repo rate is external, whereas earlier it was internal base. Okay. Then you have page number 122. 122, resolution of stress asset. Yeah, padie. Yes, ma'am. Resolution of stress assets. Yeah. In view of the enactment of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016, RBA has on RBA has on June 17, 2019, substituted the existing guidelines with a harmonized and simplified generic framework for resolution of stress assets. The extent instruction on resolution of stress assets, such as framework for Revitalizing distressed assets, CDR scheme, flexible structuring of existing loan term project loans, strategic debt restructuring scheme, change in ownership outside SDR, and scheme for sustainable structuring of stressed assets stands withdrawn with immediate effect. So, Accord what, what is this concept? RBI said that there were so many schemes which were formulated by RBI okay, for restructuring
So what the borrower used to do? Sometimes he used to go for CDR. Sometimes he used to go for HDR. Sometimes he'll go for some other scheme. And in one way or the other was dodging the banks and delaying the recovery proceeding. So RBI ne kya kya? All these schemes were withdrawn. And instead of this, you have this revised guideline with effect from 7th June 2019. 7th June 2019, all the restructuring scheme given in this, your CDR scheme, then flexible structuring of existing long-term project loan scheme, strategic debt restructuring scheme, change in ownership outside SDR, scheme for sustainable structuring of stress assets, stands withdrawn. And in alternative, RBI has given you these revised guidelines on 7 June 2019. Am I clear? Nobody is responding? Yes. So RBI Sorry. said, that so many schemes were there and the borrower was basically evading the recovery. So they said, now you only have one scheme. Yeah, read out. JLF Forum as mandatory institutional mechanism for resolution of stressed accounts also stands discontinued. Next. The lender shall not reverse the provisions maintained as on April 2, 2019 in respect of any borrower unless the reversal is a consequence of... Leave it, asset. leave it. Next. Applicability. The yeah. directions are issued in terms of provisions of Section 35AA of the Banking Regulation Act 1949 for initiation of insolvency proceedings against specific borrowers under the Insolvency and Bankruptcy, Bankruptcy Code 2016. Next. The guidelines apply. Leave it, you will not get this. Next, objective. Objectives. Framework for resolution of stress results. Early identification and reporting of stress. Lender shall recognize in incipient stress in loan accounts immediately on default by classifying such assets as special mention accounts as per the following categories. We have already, SMA. I think all of you know, SMA 012. And for Revolving credit facilities, the revised guidelines for the big borrowers, they remove SMA 0, it is 1 and 2. SMA 1 is 31 to 60 days and SMA 2 is 61 to 90 days. Next. Implementation of resolution plan. Resolution no, Below this table is very important. Yes. Bank shall report. Bank shall report credit information including classification of an account as SMA to Central Repository of Information on Large Credits. Very, very important. C-R-I-L-C. C-R-I-L-C. Central Repository of Information on Large Credit. So, the banks have to report it on the platform. Okay. And it is applicable for which borrowers? Rupees. Along borrowers having aggregate exposure of rupees 50 million, 5 crore and it above. Means 5 them. crore and above. 5 crore and above borrower availing 5 crore and above. They have to be reported on the Krillix for platform. Yeah, read, read out again. Banks shall report credit information including classification of an account as SMA to Central Repository of Information and Large Credits on all borrowers having aggregate exposure of rupees 50 million and above with them. The Krillic main report shall be submitted on a monthly basis. In addition, the lender shall submit a weekly report of instances of default by the borrowers with aggregate exposure of 50 million and above by close of business on every Friday or the preceding working day if Friday happens to be a holiday. So this is the most important. This is where the question comes. What is full form of Krillic? What is the cutoff limit? Okay. And the reporting, it is on monthly as well as on weekly basis for the default, borrows in default. Next. Implementation of resolution plan. 
Yeah. Resolution plan, all lenders must put in place board approved policies for resolution of stressed assets, including the timelines for resolution. Since default with any lender is a lagging in the indicator of financing stress faced by the borrower, the bank should initiate the process of implementing a resolution plan even before a default. Next. A review period. Once a borrower is reported to be in default by any of the lenders, they should undertake a prima facie review of the borrower account within 30 days from such default review period. During this review period of 30 days, lenders may des decide on the resolution strategy, including the nature of the RP, the approach of implementation of the RP. The lenders may also choose to initiate legal proceedings for insolvency or, or recovery. Next. And this is where the next question comes, Intercreditor Agreement, ICA, that when there is multiple banking, there has to be intercreditor agreement and the consent of how much percentage of creditor is required, 60% of lenders by number shall be binding. This is where the question comes. Yeah. In cases where... Uh, RP is to be implemented. All lenders shall enter into an intercreditor agreement during the above said review period to provide for ground rules for finalization and implementation of the RP in respect of borrowers with credit facilities from more than one lender. 75% by value and 60% by number. Yeah, next. The ICA shall provide that any decision agreed by lenders representing 75% by value of total outstanding credit facilities Fund-based as well as non-fund-based and 60% of the lender by number shall be binding upon This is where the, the question comes. Intercreditor yeah. agreement, consent of how much percentage of creditor is required. Next. The ICA may provide for rights and duties of majority lenders, duties and protection of rights of dissenting lenders, treatment of lenders with priority in cash flow, differential security interest. In particular, the RP shall provide for payment not less than the liquidation value due to the dissenting lenders. Next. Reference date in respect yeah. of... So this is an important point. For 20 billion and above, the reference date was 7 June 2019. 15 billion and above, but less than 20 billion. It was 1st January 2020 less than 15 billion to be announced in due course. So far, they have not announced. So this is all what you need to know in this. This is all what you need to know in this. Am I clear? Yes, sir. So what all we have covered? See, you do the terminal questions from credit management. Credit management, the theory, you will not go, you will not get more than five to seven questions. Theories. So, in total, you get around 25 questions. Okay. You get case studies for around 10 questions. 10 to 15 questions, you get the case studies. Okay, then simple cutoff limits, you get around five to seven questions and five to five questions, you get other general questions and three, four questions you get from the terminal given at the back, true, false. So they'll make, they'll pick up five statements from the terminal question and they say out of the following, which is incorrect. So they'll make one incorrect and remaining four correct. So they make three, four questions like this. Yes, no, okay, okay, सर साय एनपीए डॉक्यूमेंटेशन वही है सारा ओके ओके देन व्हेन यू हैव योर एबीएम एग्जाम सर बैलेंस शीट में कोई रेशियो एनालिसिस वो तो करा दिया ना आपको बेटे उसमें क्वेश्चन आ गया यू हैव इट ऑन नेक्स्ट संडे डेट 27th 27th इज योर एबीएम बीएफएम 
फोर्थ दिसंबर फोर्थ दिसंबर फोर्थ दिसंबर एंड रिटेल इलेवन टेन दिसंबर टेन ओके सो रिटेल नाउ वी विल डिस्कस ऑन वी विल डिस्कस वील स्टार्ट ऑन फोर्थ दिसंबर वी विल डिस्कस एट सिक्स ओ क्लॉक सिक्स टू टेन रिटेल थ्योरी वी विल टेक अप ऑन सिक्स टू टेन एंड वॉट एवर वील डिस्कस इन द थ्योरी इट इज वेरी वेरी सिंपल ऑल द क्वेश्चन विच आई टेल यू यू विल गेट ओके सर ओके सो यू डोंट बॉदर नाउ यू फोकस ओनली ऑन ए बी एम एंड बी एफ एम रिटेल फोर फोर आवर्स आई टेक ऑन फोर्थ डिसम्बर देन टू डेज और वन डे मोर विल टेक अप बिकॉज द थ्योरी विल टेक नॉट मोर देन फाइव टू सिक्स आवर्स and i'll tell you that all these questions are going to come from these areas i'll make you mark that and discuss it and you will get questions from there only okay sir sir bol rahe sir ye credit management thoda awkward type ka hai sir bahut tough lag raha hai to sir wo aapne bataya tha abhi 50 questions around hai wo main ha wo main aaj isko karke i'll put it 50 jitne bhi hai main aaj main dal dunga aapko theek hai group mein dal dunga ओके सर आज का रिकॉर्डिंग कब तक प्रोवाइड हो जाएगा सर प्लीज ये मैं अभी ऑफिस जाके आपको बता दूंगा जी सर जी सर हेलो सर सर ये सारा पढ़ना है क्या क्रेडिट मैनेजमेंट वाला थे सर देखो जितना मैंने कराया उसमें से आपको आंसर आ जाएगा ओके ठीक है ओ सब्सक्राइब करेंगे चैनल सब्सक्राइब करेंगे